Ever find yourself watching a movie or playing a game and just going, whoa, how did they do that um. with the visual effects? Mm -hmm. Today's deep dive is all about peeling back the layers on that magic, Okay. specifically in the world of real-time VFX. And by real-time, we're talking about anything where those effects have to be generated on the fly, video games, interactive experiences, even live events. Right. So not like those meticulously crafted CGI shots in movies that take days to render, more like yeah. that explosion happening in your game right now because you tossed a grenade. Exactly. We've got a stack of fascinating articles and breakdowns to pull from, but our big focus today is something called materials. You can almost think of them like the unsung heroes of real-time VFX. Uh -huh. They're working behind the scenes, but they can make or break the illusion. Okay, so less about the what of the effect, like fire, smoke, whatever, more about the how it actually looks convincing. Yeah. So expert speaker, for those of us who don't speak VFX, what are materials in this context? It's almost easier to start with a real world comparison. Nope. Think about seeing a cartoon drawing of fire. It's flat, right? right? You know, it's not real. Yeah. Now picture an actual bonfire, the way the flames dance and flicker, how the light seems to come from within. Mm -hmm. That's partly materials at work. So it's like the difference between looking at key, a picture of a silk dress versus actually yeah. touching the fabric, that sense of texture and how light plays on it. Exactly. In the world of VFX, materials are essentially the skin of an effect. Okay. They define how light interacts with it, how it reflects or absorbs color, whether it appears smooth, rough, shiny, translucent. All those visual cues that sell the illusion of a tangible thing. That makes me think about that ice spell in Name a Video Game. Yeah. It's not just that the enemies freeze, it's how real the ice looks. Like you could reach out and touch it, see the light refracting through. And that right there is the power of a well-crafted material. Yeah. It's the difference between an effect that's just okay and one that makes you believe in the world you're experiencing. So there's a real artistry to it then, not just slapping a generic fire texture on something. Right. You've got to consider the context, the lighting, how it interacts with the environment. Absolutely. And is real time, mm. where you have to consider things like performance and interactivity, mm. materials become even more critical. Right. But it's not just D materials doing yeah. all the heavy lifting. Okay. There's a whole team of players involved. Okay. It's like the VFX holy trinity. You've got materials, shaders, and textures all working together. Okay, cue the dramatic music. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, this is where my brain starts to melt a little. Sure. Break down these components for me. What does each one bring to the table? Think of materials as the foundation, the base properties of a surface. Okay. Is it shiny like metal, rough like stone, or translucent like glass? Okay. The, the starting point, the, what is this? Thing. So the material is like the blueprint for how we want something to look. Yeah. Then shaders come in and tell the engine how W to actually make that happen. Precisely. Shaders are like lines of code that dictate how light interacts with the material, okay. how it scatters or reflects, creating that visual depth. Gotcha. So the shader is like the instruction manual for our blueprint. Mm -hmm. And I'm guessing textures are where we add that final layer of detail. You got it. Okay. Textures are like putting a high resolution image on top of the material. Okay. They bring in the bumps, the color variations, the patterns, the, all those details that make it look weathered, worn, or whatever it needs to be. So if we imagine a glowing rune in a video game, okay. we've got the material defining it as, say, a smooth reflective stone. Right. Then the shaders tell the engine how to make that stone glow convincingly. Right. And finally, the textures would add those finer details to the rune itself, like variations in the stone's color, some etching around the glowing symbols, really making it feel less like a flat image and more like a 3D object. Exactly. Okay, this is all starting to click for me now. But I imagine some listeners might be thinking, can't you just slap a cool picture of fire on something and call it a day? Right. Why go through all this material and shader wizardry? Well, you could try that, but the results would be <laughs> less than magical. Yeah. Especially in real-time VFX, mm. where every decision has a ripple effect on not just how good things look, but how well the entire experience runs. Right. Because if that epic fire effect makes my game crash, nobody's impressed. Exactly. VFX artists are always walking that tightrope between visual fidelity and performance. Okay. So let's dive into WHY. Materials are so crucial. 
even beyond just making things look cool. Okay. First up, you've got that visual fidelity we've been talking about, that ability to truly sell the illusion. So taking something that exists only as data and making my brain go, yep, that's a brick wall, I can practically feel the texture. Exactly. Good materials are often what separate a good effect from one that makes you forget you're looking at a screen. Right. But then we have performance, which is huge EE in the real-time world. Every effect, every object is putting a strain on processing power. Ah, so this is where choosing the wrong material could turn my game into a slideshow. Bingo. Overly complex materials can tank your frame rate faster than you can say optimization. Right. And it's not just about individual elements, it's how they all work together. Yeah. Oh. Imagine a forest scene with hundreds of trees, uh -huh. each with incredibly detailed leaves that all have to be rendered in real time. Okay, yeah, I'm getting a headache just thinking about all that data. And that's just one aspect. We haven't even touched on interactivity, which adds a whole other layer of complexity. Right. In real time, effects often need to respond to what the player is doing oh. or the environment around them. So going back to that ice spell example, it's not just about freezing everything solid. Right. Maybe the ice spreads differently depending on the surface no. or the way light reflects off it changes as it grows. Exactly. That dynamic reactive element mm -hmm. is often driven by the materials themselves. Mm. They're not just static images. There would allow artists to create those cause and effect relationships that make the world feel truly alive. This is where I'm extra thankful that you're the expert and I just have to ask the question. <laughs> but we keep bumping into this word shader earlier. It was a code recipe. Right. But what does that actually look like in action? Okay. How do VFX artists use these shaders to get those mind blowing effects? Oh. Shaders are where things get really interesting. Okay. One common technique is playing with transparency and opacity. Think smoke plumes, ghostly figures, or even those heat waves shimmering off asphalt. So more than just making something see-through, it's about how it fades, how much you can see through it at different points. You're getting it. Right. And it's not just about whether something is visible or not. Okay. There's also the way light interacts with it. Okay. Ever notice how objects in games especially when magic is involved, yeah. have that sort of ethereal glow. Oh, 100% makes them really pop against the background. Right. How do they do that? That's often a Fresnel effect, which is a fancy way of saying the shader makes the surface more reflective at certain angles. Okay. It's like how a still lake looks almost mirror-like from a distance. Okay. But as you get closer, you just to see through to the bottom. Wow, I never connected those two things before. Yeah. So game artists are basically replicating real-world physics to make these effects more convincing. Precisely. Another great example is UV distortion. Oh, okay. Sounds complicated, but it's basically how artists make things like fire flicker, realistically, water ripple, or energy fields pulsate. Okay. They're manipulating how the texture is man p g onto the object, not just the texture itself. So instead of needing a whole separate image for each frame of the fire animation, right. they can use shaders to warp or move a single image in a way that looks like realistic movement. You've got it. It's incredibly efficient and allows for those really dynamic, believable effects without needing a ton of different textures. I'm starting to realize how much clever problem solving goes into this field. And speaking of efficiency, we've got to talk about normal maps. Yeah. They've been mentioned a few times. Why are they so important, especially in real time VFX? OK, my brain is officially buzzing with shader secrets. Sure. But we've still got a whole other world to uncover textures. OK. Expert speaker, are we talking about massive digital libraries full of every surface imaginable? Yeah wood, metal, alien skin. You're not far off. There's a texture for just about everything you can imagine. Oh, and okay. then some. Right. It can be overwhelming. But thankfully, just like a banker doesn't need to memorize every type of flower. Right. VFX artists have their go-to texture types. Okay, good. I was worried this was about to get way too granular for me. Sure. So what are some of the essentials, the ones every aspiring VFX artist should wrap their head around? Let's start with the foundation, the diffuse map. Okay. This is like the base coat of paint. It determines the overall color of your material. Okay. Imagine you're creating a fire effect. The diffuse map would hold all those reds, oranges, and yellows that make up the flames. So kind of like laying down the base colors of a painting before you go in with the shading and detail work. That's a great way to put it. Mm. But what if you want to control how visible something is? Okay. That's where alpha masks come in. 
Oh, is this how you get those wispy smoke trails or make the edges of an energy field sort of fade out? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Alpha masks are all about transparency. Okay. They're like stencils. Okay. White areas are fully opaque. Black areas are completely transparent. And you can have shades of gray in between for those subtle fading effects. So for that energy field, you'd have a bright core that's fully opaque. Right. But then the alpha mask would make the edges gradually fade to black, making it seem like it's dissipating into thin air. You've got it. And then, of course, we have our old friends, the normal maps. Right. We've touched on them a few times. Yeah. But they're worth revisiting because they're so essential for tricking the eye in real-time VFX. Right. They were those fake detail wizards. But it'd be great to dig a little deeper into how they actually achieve that. Imagine you want a stone wall to look really intricate. Okay. With tons of little bumps and grooves carved into it. Okay. Modeling all of that in 3D would be a performance nightmare. Yeah. Especially if you have a whole castle made of this stuff. Yeah, that sounds like a recipe for a meltdown. Exactly. So instead, you use a normal map. Okay. It's a special type of texture that doesn't actually change the shape of the surface. Okay. But it tells the game engine how light should behave on it. Okay. So you get the illusion of all that depth and detail without the performance hit. So it's less about actually creating the bumps and more about creating the shadows and highlights that make our brains think there are bumps. Precisely. It's incredibly clever. Okay. And it's one of the reasons why modern games can look so realistic while still running smoothly. It's amazing how much visual trickery goes on behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. So we've got color, transparency, fake 3D, what other tricks do textures have up their sleeves? Well, how about making things F-L-O-W convincingly? Okay. That's where flow maps come in. Okay. These are used to simulate movement within a material, Okay. particularly for liquids. Okay, so if I want a river to look like it's actually flowing or lava to realistically ooze and bubble, uh -huh. I need a good flow map. You got it. The flow map basically directs the movement of the texture. Okay. So instead of just being a static image, it actually looks like it's in motion. That's so cool. Are there any other types of textures that blow your mind? Definitely. Sub-UV textures are super interesting. Okay. They're often used for particle effects like fire, smoke, or magical swirls. Okay. Imagine a texture sheet with multiple frames of animation, like a flip book. Okay. The sub-UV technique allows artists to cycle through those frames over time. Okay. Creating the illusion of movement within the effect itself. So instead of having to create a separate 3D model for every spark in an explosion, right. they can use a sub-UV texture to animate a bunch of sparks from a single image. That's brilliant. It really is. And then we have noise textures. Okay. Which might seem counterintuitive at first. Okay. They're all about randomness and variation. Okay, I'm sensing there's more to it than just making things look messy. Exactly. In nature, things are rarely perfectly uniform. Right. Clouds have different densities, fire flickers unpredictably. Yeah. Even wood grain has subtle variations. Right. Noise textures help introduce that element of controlled chaos. Okay. Making effects look more natural and less computer generated. It's like adding those imperfections that actually make things more believable. Mm hmm this has been incredibly eye-opening, but I keep thinking back to that balancing act between quality and performance. Right. How do VFX artists actually manage to cram all this awesome detail into games without turning them into unplayable messes? It's a constant juggling act, for sure. Yeah. Optimization is key at every stage of the process. Okay. For starters, it's about choosing the right tools for the job. You don't always need the most complex shader or the highest resolution texture for every single effect. Right. Sometimes a simpler approach can achieve the desired look without hogging resources. So it's about being strategic, not just going all out on every detail. Absolutely. Texture resolution is another big one. Okay. Imagine plastering a gigantic high resolution photo onto a tiny object in your game. Okay. You're wasting a ton of data on detail that the player will never even see. It's like using a fine tip pen to draw a billboard. Exactly. Totally yeah. overkill. Exactly. And then there's level of detail or LOD. Okay. This is a technique where artists create multiple versions of a material at different resolutions. Okay. So when an object is far away, the game uses a lower resolution version. Okay. And as you get closer, it switches to higher and higher quality. So that super detailed tree we talked about earlier, well, maybe from a distance, it just uses a simple texture with some basic shading. Yeah. But as you get closer, the game swaps in those high resolution textures and complex shaders. Exactly. It's a seamless transition, right? but it saves a ton of processing power. And we can't forget about those glowy 
emissive materials. Right. They can be real resource hogs. Yes. So using them strategically is key. Absolutely. So maybe that magical sword only glows when you're actively using it, not just sitting in your inventory. Exactly. And finally, it's about minimizing overdraw. That's when you have multiple transparent objects layered on top of each other. Okay. Which can really bog down performance. Right. Good VFX artists are mindful of these layers. Right. Making sure they're only using what's absolutely necessary. Wow. It's like this whole hidden world of optimization and efficiency that we as players rarely even think about. It is. And, and the amazing thing is that it's all in service of creating those truly immersive, believable experiences. Yeah. Every flickering flame, every ripple of water, every realistic texture. Right. It's all part of building a world that feels real. Expert speaker, this has been an incredible journey. For those listening who are now fired up to try their hand at VFX, what's your biggest piece of advice? Oh, don't be afraid to experiment. Oh, okay. Start simple. Study the real world. Mm -hmm. Pay attention to how light interacts with different surfaces. Right. How materials behave. Yeah. And then try to replicate those effects. Oh, okay. There are tons of resources available online, and the best way to learn is by doing. Couldn't agree more. So next time you're blown away by those incredible real-time effects, remember the hidden magic of materials, shaders, and textures. Absolutely. It's a whole world of artistry and technical wizardry working together to create those unforgettable gaming moments.